Oh, hello. It's week 27 of becoming an electrician. This isn't my usual spot. What am I doing? Well, the sun came out the other day, so I started with a project that I've been meaning to do for a while. It's just been, you know, winter and horrible, and I've not wanted to be in the garden. This is a pergola that used to have solar panels on, on an off-grid setup, but they were a bit pants and rubbish in the clouds, so they're getting an upgrade. But anyway, if you want to know more about that, look out for a future video. But let's get back to the video for this week. Okay, so we were talking about consumer units, weren't we? I don't know what it is, but changing consumer units kind of appeals to me. I think I'm forgetting that they're quite often in awkward places, or maybe the cabling needs extending, or the process of changing a consumer unit shows up all the faults that were on all the circuits. But anyway, we're going to get talking about all the different circuits that we would find in a consumer unit. We start off with the very British ring circuits. These are, as I'm sure you know, a loop of wire that goes to each socket and then back to the consumer unit. The idea being that it's saved on cabling during war times. It's stuck around and off that we have spurs which are either fused or unfused. Uh, Non-fused spurs have to have the same size cabling as you would expect on the rest of that circuit. One thing to note is you can often tell whether there is a spur off or whether that socket is a spur by the number of cables. Three cables to a socket back means that there's a spur off it and one means that it's most likely a spur. Of course, there's exceptions and all sorts of dodgy electrics could have been done before you get there. Next up, we've got our radials, our A2 and A3. These can be different based on the sizing of the space and the sizing of the cable. Speaking to a few different electricians, it seems that radials are chosen more so now. Uh, they're just a bit easier and they're great for places like garages or sheds where you might just want to have one cable run instead of an entire ring. I then learned about a cooker circuit. This is where diversity comes in. So you wouldn't expect all of the hobs and the cooker to be running at the same time. Why? Well, even if all the hobs are on, they're not all gonna be active because of thermostatic control. So it might be that that pan is up to temperature. Well, that wok needs to keep hammering the power out to keep that hot. Maybe your pot's already to boil, or maybe your oven has done its heat cycle and it's just circulating, waiting for that temperature to dip below level. So. In those cases, we would use diversity. Next up's the shower circuit, often wired in 10 mil. These need to have their own isolator, but you wouldn't find that isolator within the special zones. That brings me nicely onto immersion heaters. These are fairly high power at three kilowatts, nowhere near the power of a shower, but they run for hours, so they have their own circuit. You wouldn't want to see any of these installed into a normal socket. I mean, it's probably been done, and if you find somebody that's done that, or doing that, tell them to stop. Please tell them to stop. Personally, I've never seen it, but you can get bell transformers in consumer units. These can have their own miniature circuit breaker to feed them, or quite often they're piggybacked off the lighting circuit. Talking of piggybacking, Smoke alarms are often piggybacked off the lighting circuit and they have three core cables as well as earth. So they have the line, the neutral and a trigger wire. So they're all interlinked. Alarms, they're a bit more specialist and they can have circuits which are connected or they can have electricians that work on them. Generally, as far as an electrician goes, it's the spur to power the equipment. Okay, so we've got all of our circuits in our consumer unit. And there could be multiples of these. We could have a few rings, a few radials. We could even have two immersion heaters if the house or the property was big enough. But in our consumer unit, we've got a double pole isolator. And then 
we would have what's called a split load. So we'd have two RCDs, which would then feed half the circuits. Now we would want our lighting circuits to be on different halves. We'd want our rings to be on different halves. So let's say the upstairs and the downstairs. This is so that if a RCD trips, it's not gonna take the lighting out in all of your house. That could be very useful if it happened in the middle of the night. And sometimes it doesn't take too much craziness for an RCD to trip. Perhaps a blown bulb. Do you want one blown bulb to knock out your entire lighting in your house while you struggle to try and find in the dark that RCD to reset it? Talking of RCDs tripping, we'd want our neutrals for our two sides, our split load board, to be on separate neutral bars. If all of those neutrals were put onto the same bar, there's a chance of nuisance tripping. I wonder if there's some dodgy electricians out there that have wired it up wrong and then claim to the customer that, oh, your circuits are dodgy, you need to do this, do that. Maybe I'm just distrustful of dodgy electricians. Do not get me started on mechanics. <laughs> of course, there's circuits that don't necessarily require RCDs, but I'm not gonna get into that on this video. In my view, if we don't want nuisance tripping, and if we don't wanna knock out a bunch of circuits in the event of tripping, then we need to go for RCBOs. A little bit more expensive, but in my view, just a better choice. But of course, everyone has a different budget, and a split load RCD board is completely adequate and fine. Talking of splitting the loads, we want to make sure that our heaviest users, our heaviest items are closest to the RCDs, which then allows um, our lightest loads to be further away. That just then means that the current doesn't have to travel as far down that bus bar. It's good practice to do this. There are many thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of consumer units in the UK, and of course all around the world that don't meet the current coding practices the 18th regulation in the UK. Now, these don't have to be ripped out, of course, but we can see the advantages to having the latest and most modern consumer units. Just having RCD protection on your circuits is a great thing. And for those boards that don't have it, it probably is worth an upgrade. But of course, they're fine as they are, if people wanna leave them, if they work. Okay, so there we have it. We've changed a consumer unit, job done right. Well, it's the job of the electrician to make sure that all the clamps and cables are correct and that the meter tails are in the correct order. We also would need to make sure that all of the stickers are in place. Stickers are important, right? Then we would do all of the dead tests and live tests and fill out the paperwork. Well, there we have it, a consumer unit change. Hmm, until next time, battery man out.